And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Brandon Scott is with us, international renowned magician that travels the world performing magic. He's a regular performer at the famous Magic Castle in Hollywood, founder of the Archeo Magicologist Society. He frequently goes on paranormal expeditions in search of magical and supernatural secrets. He's joining us tonight to talk about the magic of Halloween. Brandon, welcome back. How have you been? Well, happy Halloween, George. It is a marvelous time. You know what I love about this? It gets us into Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. It doesn't get any better, does it? Uh, it only gets better and better and better. Halloween is, is a great time to uh, connect with the uh, community, with friends, and to uh, align ourselves to our highest potential. How old were you when you started Magical Things? I was four. Four, four years, years old? old. Well, I, 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 got my, I got my first magic book when I was four years old. And in kinder, I, I had a purple tuxedo, and I was known as the Purple Wizard, and did my magic shows at the age of five and six. By the time I was seven, I was already working. Now, who trained you? Well, I was very lucky. First of all, I got gifted with, with a wonderful book. book the books uh, um, that have existed for centuries have always been the tool that can inspire a child. And uh, it surely did to me. Uh, my parents were friends with really good magicians. And so they would come and mentor me. And... Um, even even as I was getting into high school, I was really lucky to meet people like the amazing Randy and um, and, and Craig's uh, um, who 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 uh, kind of taught me the the other realm of magic uh, as they they and during the era of Yuri Geller were were trying to seek the answers of the psychic phenomena and paranormal things. So uh, I my magic became part of the founding of the Institute of Parapsychology in Mexico. That's that's my beginning in magic. That's fantastic. And, of course, how do you handle Halloween, Brandon? Well, for me, Halloween is like Christmas in a way, in the sense that there are, where I live, uh, there are a lot of events. Uh, the Magic Castle, the whole entire month, is a Halloween event. And by the way, this year's theme uh, is, because it's still happening, uh, a supernatural soiree. And they have a lot of kind of seance, um, occultish things going on. And uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, And, of course, they have their seance room, right? Uh, And being being, uh, an event performer... I, I perform for cities and private parties and corporate things and hotels. So that's been my my Halloween uh, commercially, shall we say. Personally, what I like to do is uh, go to nature. And, you know, Halloween has been uh, celebrated for a long time by many civilizations. Uh, it, 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 is a, it, it, it has to do with the moon. And with crops and all sorts of harvesting and things like that. So even the Shumash in California uh, during this time would have um, some sort of a ceremony. And I like to go to the mountains and uh, connect to the earth uh, during these time periods and just kind of tune up my inner magic. Do you dress up for Halloween, Brendan? You know, I dress up all year round. For Halloween, I like not to dress up. I just go as myself. <laughs> Which is scary. No, I'm kidding. Well, could be. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's better that I do dress up. I remember okay. seeing you uh, perform at the Magic Castle several years ago. You were fantastic. Well, thank you. Yes. And, and I have a new show, so I'm going to invite you. And um, you can experience uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, let's call it um, the 2023, 2024 uh, magic experience. What is it about Halloween that makes adults kids again? Oh, this is the most important thing, I think. Halloween Halloween is like magic. Uh, it it kind of awakens our inner child. We grew up with the, the mystery and fantasy of 
uh, putting on masks and trick or treating, and uh, it it makes us a, a child again when Halloween comes around to put on a costume, and it parallels what happens uh, when you do magic, which is why it gives me so much joy to do magic not only for children but for adults because. For a moment, you suspend your belief in a, in a, in a reality that we live in, and uh, by either putting on a costume or, or seeing a magical thing you can't explain, uh, you you go back to innocence in a way, and and that awe that we seem to lose in our everyday grind. And I've had great memories from Halloween, not only as a kid but as a father, taking my children out. Watching them do their thing, dressed up, it was just, it's just so adorable, isn't it? What, what was, yeah, it, it is adorable to see them, uh, uh, in it, because even nowadays they make their own choices. They create their own costumes. Uh, it's not just going out there and, and buying a costume. I see a lot of creativity uh, with kids, and I ask them, and most of the time they've, they've come up with that idea. What was your favorite costume to put on? Zorro. Zorro, I can see you as Zorro. I love it. You know, that was the yeah. first, I, I, I had a fake mustache, which could be the reason why I have a real one now. But uh, I, I just loved the costume. And, you know, I had my plastic sword and I had the black cape and I jumped around <laughs> and I did, <laughs> did my Z. I loved it. Oh, that was beautifully said. I'm sure everybody listening is picturing you dressed as Zorro right now. It was, I can't remember the name. Guy something was the original Zorro in the Disney films. Uh Uh-huh. I got to get his last name, but his first name was Guy, G-U-I. But those were classics. Classics indeed. They were, yeah. You know, I saw all those, I I grew up in Mexico. My parents were with the State Department. um, Oh, that's right, yeah. I, 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 I grew up watching Zorro and, and, and the Twilight Zone and, and other world in Spanish. <laughs> so, uh, but Zorro was, was one of them. And, and I believe you were referring to Guy Williams. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. If he, is he still with us? I'm not sure. I don't know. Tommy, I'll check that out and let us know. Yes. That'll be something. Uh, I think not. I think he passed away uh, a, a while back, 30, 40 years ago. Wow. Amazing times. What was your favorite costume when you were a kid? Oh, well, you know, as a kid, I, I, I had the typical, like, Frankenstein costumes. And my dentist, who was the first person who showed me magic, made masks. He was one of the pioneers of that kind of the modern plastic mask, and he, he did it, started doing it with the plasters and stuff that he used for his dentistry. And, and he had made me a mask that was very unique. It was, it was kind of like a monster, but silly. And in, now that I think of it, it was a little spacey, like a little spacey. Huh. So, so it, was, it, was, it, it must have foreshadowed my uh, interest in, in all things uh, supernatural. Um, but I, I like to dress as a wizard. You know, I work at the Renaissance Fair every year. I, I have a stage show there. And um, I've developed this, this wonderful, over the years, um, authentic kind of Renaissance wizard's uh, uh, wardrobe that, is, that feels comfortable. And I, that's one of my favorite, let's say, now as an adult costume that I might put on. And it's supposed to be fun, enlightening, Upbeat, isn't it? It is. It is fun in like being an upbeat. Now, now uh, that said, it's also the commercially become really bloody and gory, and uh, and scary. Now, um, I I think it, it depends on uh, what thrills people. I just got today, uh, just a few hours ago, I was at the Natural History Museum, uh, performing for a not gory, uh, uh, scary uh, Halloween event, but kind of like a spooky, fun one called Boney Island. And they had a tribute to magicians. They're all skeletons, animatronic skeletons doing magic tricks and circus acts. 
and uh, quite fascinating. Uh, and, and, and the spirit was, the, the community was there uh, experiencing that joy we were speaking of, that silliness, um, without the blood and gore. But I think traditionally we all as a culture uh, and in different cultures, uh, and, and then even more evident, uh, Dia de los Muertos coming up. Uh, it, 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 as humans, it's a moment where we can kind of make fun of what we fear of death and, and be one with it in a comfortable way. Some, 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 some uh, uh, societies, they, they'll go and have dinner at the grave with their relatives. Really? And it, it, we don't, we, we're not as scared of, of death as we might be the rest of the year. What is your favorite ritual with Halloween? Well, do you go to parties? What do you do? Well, I work at parties. I, I probably do like 20 parties. In the you're, entire you're, and you're always spot on, aren't you? Right, right. Uh, and my and I have I have a very Twilight Zone-ish Halloween kind of show. So on Hallow, so so really, uh, on, I, I the party part is done. I, I really like to uh, sometimes just sit by myself or sit with a s- small group of friends. Uh, if if I'm camping, which I didn't do this year, it's great to be by a bonfire and just a- enjoy the majesticness of of nature. And, 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 and the stars, because uh, bottom, bottom line, uh, in a way, Halloween uh, in ancient times uh, speaks of how it's, it, it, it's the opening uh, of a doorway, a, a, a veil between realities uh, is more accessible to us during this time. Uh, and uh, so one can connect with once uh once uh, spirit and perhaps even with our ancestors and uh, if there's a ritual involved it'd be simply to pay attention to that and know that it's it's part of the ongoing timeline of our uh, existence brandon how much of magic is sleight of hand or illusion Ooh, that's a really interesting question george uh it's it's both and more. Aha! Uh-huh. Because uh, magic is an art; it is a skill, uh, and, and it is it, it involves many skills. Actually, it's one of the one of the arts that combines all of the arts. Uh, and to uh, to accomplish the traditional um, illusions per se, the the magic effects that. Uh, you know, magic part of it came as a result of man trying to figure out nature and duplicating it, and and uh, uh, making fire appear out of nowhere, or uh, doing doing shamanistic things uh, to to help people uh, realize the potential of, of something else other than what they see, illusion, and a lot of it was developed through skills. And so sleight of hand is the skill part of the craft. Illusion is what we create. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the difference between magic tricks and illusion? Uh, Because an illusionist, uh, of which I I also am, is also a person who does large illusions, you know, sewing a lady in half, making somebody float. Those are called illusions. But the entire uh, aspect of magic is one that through skills, through psychology, through storytelling, both silent and uh, nonverbal, and, uh, and, th- and through story, through humor, and through misdirection, uh, you, you create something that is not real, that's not possible. And that is an illusion. Who's better, you Copperfield or Chris Angel? Excuse me. Who's better, Copperfield or Chris Angel? Oh, well, they're 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 different in different ways. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm very curious because uh, uh, David is about to make the moon disappear. Did you hear that? I heard about that. 
yeah, yeah. So he's been keeping this under wraps. Uh, so uh, this is going to be very exciting. Um, now, uh, they do two do very different things. Uh, David Copfield is a pioneer in, 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 in modern magic. Uh, of course, based on traditional magic, he's taken magic way to another level, and uh, his his combining of 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 concepts to create new illusions or or illusions we've never seen, and making them so believable in such an entertaining way, uh, he deserves a lot of credit for that. Uh, Chris Angel. Uh, has brought to magic uh, that very street gritty rawness mm-hmm. that might have even been the kind of 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 abrasive magic that happened back in medieval days uh, with 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 an edge, and so he's used other techniques to uh, to to surprise and fool people with. So in 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 there in in, in in there I don't really compare as far as who's better, but who is contributing to the arts of magic and to the ongoing uh, you know magic is very popular right now. It's everywhere. Well, it's, it's hot. all over YouTube. Right. It wins uh, uh, talent contests on major networks. Uh, so it's 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 available to people, and that wasn't so. You know, a hundred years ago, the Magic Castle helped that really grow, and all the magic we see now in great uh, ways is, is thanks to what the Academy of Magical Arts and Milt Larson, who recently passed away, as you know, yeah, who created the Magic yeah. Castle. Did how did Harry Houdini make an elephant disappear? Uh, well. I can't really tell you. You know the trick, don't you? Well, yes, but I will say this to everybody who's been listening. When I answered your question about magic and illusion, I, I kind of hinted as to how it might have been done. Hint again. What was that? H- hint again. <laughs> uh, I Look, it really, it it is... The art, it is tr- it, how is how is it done? Really, I would I would think was there was some kind of a stage mechanism that lowered the elephant or something. Well, back then, you know, that would have been probably loud. I don't think they had hydraulics, so it would have been loud. You would have heard the thing going. Yeah. You know, I'm guessing, and I mean, uh, Blackstone Senior also made an elephant disappear, and I saw Blackstone Junior make an elephant appear and dis- dis- disappear, and Doug Henning would make uh, an elephant disappear, and I, I was there when he made it disappear. I was just a few feet away from him. Uh, Were you in awe? Dis- I was in awe because here's the thing: it doesn't really matter how. The, the, it's all about just letting go and experience experiencing the mystery of something impossible happening. Now, there, there's obviously a way of doing it. It's like when I do a show and some heckler says, hey, I know how you did that. I know how you did that. You're using magic. <laughs> you sure are. We're going to take a short break, Brandon. We'll come back and chat more and open up the phone lines as we talk about the magic of Halloween. And welcome back to The Magic of Halloween with Brendan Scott. George Norrie here with us. Brendan, have you ever had a trick that has gone awry that just didn't work out? Oh, yes. It happens to all of us. And it is my nature to make it look like it was supposed to. So you get a laugh out of it and it works. Yeah. And sometimes real magic happens and stuff goes awry, yet the magic happens by itself. What is one of your favorite tricks? Well, without telling us how you do it, of course. <laughs> First of all, I, I really enjoy the art of, of tricks with cards. There's probably thousands of 
different illusions that you could do with 52 little pieces of paper, you know. And so I really enjoy that. But any, anything that transforms, uh, lately I have been uh, making appear out of thin air uh, 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 different tribal and ancient instruments that in themselves create uh, sounds that we haven't heard and are magical. And so I guess those are my new favorite magic tricks. Um, but that when I, when I was telling you that sometimes magic happens, uh, this was partially match. I don't know if it's magic or synchronicity or what, but I was performing in the parlor at the Magic Castle. And the trick, which is also one of my favorite tricks, is where I have uh, my assistant uh, who offers the audience a choice of a card. And then... She starts to dance flamenco while I'm playing the guitar, and she throws the deck at me, and the chosen card appears between the strings of the guitar. Wow. On this one night, witnessed by many magicians, she uh, she threw the card, let's just say, uh, early. <laughs> and without me doing any sleight of hand, the card that the audience picked by itself appeared in between the, the strings of the guitar. Fate, how do you explain that? You know, I almost called you that night. <laughs> by the way, um, I I don't know. I mean, it could it could be a coincidence, but I experience way too many synchronicities in life to 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 chuck it off that sometimes uh, you know the the subatomic photons of marvel align themselves and and things happen on their own let's go to the calls this last half is going to go by quickly joe in long island new york hey joseph go ahead yeah hi two-part question uh First, if you do magic from a distance, do you expect it to sometimes go like stage one, stage two, stage three, or phase one, phase two, phase three, and its effect, or do you expect it to go with one sweep in terms of effect? And the second question is, uh, if something goes wrong on stage and say, uh, you know, it's a woman as the one being stuck in the quandary. Do these people get a little nervous uh, about that, about something going wrong when they're on stage? Oh, great. Uh, is it Joseph? Joe, yeah. yeah. Joe, Joe, yeah, great questions. Uh, I'll answer the, the, the second one because it's shorter, a shorter answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you so do they, do you mean the person on stage, like the the, the audience person, or the or yeah, the, the person you bring up on stage? Oh yeah, uh, I happen to treat uh, the my my show in in such an atmosphere of fun that nothing really really goes wrong. No one is embarrassed. It's not like someone blows up. Uh, now in 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 in, in there there's been times in the past with other magicians where it's a little bit more serious where somebody does a trick like uh, the finger guillotine and accidentally chops off someone's finger or is is trying to make somebody float and they fall down into the orchestra pit you know and, and in those situations there's there's tension and concern and, and you don't recover from that uh it's it's a it's a real tragedy that happens the type of magic that goes wrong with us professionals uh, is, is minor in, in that regard. And whoever is on stage experiencing it, we navigate through it in a fun way, in, in, in the way I do it in any event. Um, now, your, your first question, when you set a far, when, when you, you the three phases of magic that you talk about, of, of effect, what did you mean by when you're, when you're doing it from a distance? You mean when I'm on right, stage? Right. Okay, so say you, you, would you expect the effect to occur like in quantifiable or actual stages where it's like one, two, three rather than okay. one? Yeah. So, so it, the best magic, the best crafted magic, one of, of the techniques uh, 
is that we craft a, an, an effect or a sequence of effects with multiple surprises and stages that, like music, it crescendos into a, a phase three or, or, or climatic uh, moment. And so it may consist of uh, an, an, an awakening spark of something magical, then a little bit more solid, wait a minute, what did I just see? What's going on to, uh, wow, <laughs> what was that? I hope that answered your question. Next up, let's go to Eric, truck driving in Ohio. Hello, Eric. Hello, I, I've got a question. Um, when you use magic stations, like I know the word focus is pretty, you know, tame. When are words important, like when sorcerers and witchcraft use them, and they use those words, are they, you know, could a magician, is he very tentative to use other things to, like, when you when you use an incantation to uh, call on, like, black magic, or do you kind of stay away from that and just stay with sleight of hand and doing things without using words? Aha. Uh-huh. Well, um, <coughs> yes, magicians use words. Uh, for- there's also silence magic, pantomime magic. Uh, comedy has become a very integral part of magic uh, because the words help create the illusion. Now, when you see a, a party magician uh, using magical words, Shazam, Hocus Pocus, Abracadabra, these these are just like super character fabulistic astrologious words. Um, if you're referring, they're, they're there. They're there because it's it's part of the what's become popular magic. You know, we we have we have a magic wand. We have magic words. Now, the whole idea of spells and magic words goes back in history to when it was used with different kinds of intent to to create something to happen. Uh, whether whether it's uh, you know demonic or 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 not, it's the intent of the individual. You know, if somebody wants to use words or a spell, uh, it's like if some you know we hear about curses or we hear about all these things. Uh, you know, words words and thoughts can become reality, uh, and that's just the natural paranormal, not paranormal. Uh, so, so somebody who wants to craft a, a word to to do good with someone uh, can do so, and somebody who who has already uh, ill nature may try to do so for, for bad. But, but words like neuro linguistic uh, uh, programming kind of words or any kind of words are meant to impact us. They influence us. They influence our our our, our awareness. They influence our subconscious. And, and words are used all day long by advertisers to uh, suggest things to us. So, if one is going to uh, use words in any kind of magical way, they have to have high consciousness and 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 know the laws of cause and effect and realize that what they're saying. Um, it's like, be careful what you wish for. And a good point. Albany, New York we go. Steve's with us. Hey, Steve. Hey, George. Nice talk to you again. You too, my friend. Thank you. Okay, this Fire. may be a little off subject, but uh, when I was in high school, I bought my first of three hearses. And I used to drive around in it like a regular car. And I used to pick up this hitchhiker regularly, and he used to get in the car, and I'd introduce myself. i go, well, my name is Steve. And he goes, yeah, my name is Steve, too. And I go, oh, yeah, I know your sister, Marcia, too. I never knew who he was <coughs> until he was on uh, Jay Leno one night. Who was he? I'll give you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Um, he, um, he he was asked, how did you get the idea for the, uh, the hearse, being a hearse driver in high school uh, with Billy? And he said, well, I went to the State University of Albany. And... His name is, and he used to be picked up regularly by this guy who drove a hearse. And I sat back and I was like freaked out because that was him. That was Steve Gutenberg. 
Whoa, <laughs> the actor. Yeah, I used to drive around with him in my car. That's funny. Huh. Well, thank you for sharing that, Steve. Is your magic involved mind tricks too, Brandon? Uh, yes, uh, a lot of it does. You know, what is now being called, well, it's always been called, but uh, we're now more familiar with mentalists. Mentalism is a form of magic trick. Uh, and it, 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 in, it also uh, involves great deal of skill. And so a, a mental trick is, is created uh, a lot with, with the placement of words and concepts and, and op- sometimes also objects. And it creates the illusion in your mind, not just with your eyes, more so that more so it happens in, in, in your mind, in, 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 in your th- Thoughts, uh, not necessarily as an as an intellectual impact. Although intellectually, it just forces you to try to analyze what just happened. So, yeah, there is mental mental magic tricks, and uh, a lot of it is done with with numbers because numbers hundreds of years ago were discovered to have magical properties, and magicians learned uh, the, the formulas to use them as, uh, as magic tricks. And it, it creates a diff, a, a, the same sensation you might have as a child when you see a magic trick, but perhaps on a whole different level. Eric is truck driving in Indiana. Hey, Eric, welcome. Hey, George, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask your guest tonight if um, uh, voodoo is it a is it a myth? Is it, or is it is it a part of magic? Uh, and does it really work? If it is not a myth, it's actually a religion, Brandon, isn't it? Yeah, voodoo is 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 a religion in some of the islands, and uh, in in other places uh, that there's a similar form of of, of ritual, uh, not called voodoo, but it's basically the same thing. And uh, I, I want to first of all differentiate that the kind of magic I do uh, professionally on stage. And all over the world is is entertainment magic. Uh, but as George mentioned at the introduction of the show, I I, I have researched uh, uh, with interest uh, the supernatural, and uh, included in this are are some of the phenomena that happen when 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 tribes and, and certain religions do uh, their rituals. And in, in the case of voodoo. Voodoo is is a tradition. Uh, the whole thing about, you know, I guess has been Hollywoodized uh, about, you know, in, especially horror films sometimes where, you know, you put pins into a doll and all this kind of stuff. You know, that's a that's that's kind of like a popularization of what uh, what might be done. But. Uh, if, if if you're asking, uh, you know, is it real or it's not real? I think it's associated to what I mentioned earlier on. You know, uh, if, if we as individuals or as a group, uh, we have an intent, uh, we have a desire. Uh, hopefully, it's a good one, like uh, helping the planet, <laughs> uh, uh, having peace. Uh, w- w- there's been experiments where uh, 10,000 people have meditated on the same day. And created something positive. So, um, you know, people with ill intents uh, are are also uh, due to um, whatever circumstances and education or or lack of education uh, might want to use ritual and words to 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 create harm or to threaten. But um, that's just no different than us being a bully to somebody else physically. Brandon, I want to thank you for being on the program, my friend. I look forward to seeing you when I'm back in L.A., okay? Uh, are you talking to me? Yeah. Thank you for uh, doing doing the program with us. Yes, yes. Listen, I, I don't know if you're willing to do this sometime, but I would love for you to post a picture of you as Zorro either tomorrow or next year. <laughs> we'll work on that. Thank you. Brandon Scott.
For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lawnhood, Sean Latasor, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Banal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett, I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.